Yale Brothers, episode 71. 71. Two, three. I can't take it when you tell me about the shape you're in. And I can't fake it when you say let's try again. Cause I remember when you asked me to stay. You used to say, put your arms around me, keep me safe. Wrap your arms around me, keep me warm. Wrap your arms around me when it feels so cold. Stand outside and curse the rain Spend your whole life waiting for your ship to come in Go where the grass is greener, things won't change Cause I remember when you used to say Wrap your arms around me, keep me warm Wrap your arms around me when it feels so cold Make it all night, don't let go Tattle, tattle, hold me close Make it all night, don't let go Hello, how's it going? Welcome to episode 71 of the Yale Brothers Show. I'm Chris. And I'm Roger. And welcome, Chris. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. Did I sound phony right then? Kind of. That's okay. Um, what were we? What did we just hear? That was new to me. It was Doug McKelly's song, Tighter, that I found a work up I was doing. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there. I love that song. We had a recording of it. I don't know what happened to it, but that's just a two track I was working on. Oh, it sounds it sounds nice, man. It's a great song. How how long ago did you guys do that? <laughs> <laughs> that one was that I recorded that in '09, but it was it was way older than that. That's the '90s. Oh my God, that's cool. Okay, mm-hmm. that's cool. I want to tell you, I, I I was took a few minutes and hung with little Stevie downstairs. Yeah. She is so sweet, man. My cat, she's hanging on. Um, she's the friendliest cat I ever met, I think. She's the friendliest cat ever, man. Now, how old is she now? Oh, about 16. Well, she seriously, her her eyes look clear and stuff, and she moves around great. Yeah, she just doesn't eating that great, so we, so we have to give her a syringe, a couple syringes of food every now and then, but she does eat a little. Oh man, I just she came onto my lap, and I didn't want to. That's why it was a couple minutes getting up here. Yeah, we she's got a little kidney failure going on for the last couple of years, but she's hanging in there. Oh man, I don't know. I'm very sad, but she's okay right now. Yeah, and you said like feeding her with a syringe. That's okay if she's going to eat. Yeah, she'll. Yeah, poor but little she still thing. Eats. She'll she's, let me know. But she's still sweet, and she was purring a little downstairs. Yeah, she's not. I mean, she's bright eyed. I just, I don't want her to suffer, and I, I want her life to be okay. Yeah, me too. Me too, man. Uh, Speak. I saw another cat, the one you call Kevin, outside. Yeah. What about <laughs> Kevin, the black cat? 
But Kevin, it's it, like if there was a stoner cat, his name would be Kevin. I don't know why. I don't know. It just sounds like a, to me, it sounds like a stoner kind of thing. Oh, that's my cat, Kevin. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about here? Oh, I hey, guess. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> or he's a stoner friend who comes, hey, Kevin, what's going on? I don't know. It just struck me that way. Yeah. And uh, that's Kevin. No, he's I, a trip. He is a <laughs> Kevin trip. Um, and I think I'm really an uh, introvert pretending to be an extrovert. Okay. You know what I mean? I get, I don't know if you say so. I was talking to our friend Dale in the lounge and uh, we were, we were talking about that. I really think that I try to be, I'm a little more over the top and not, and sometimes come off phony because I'm really an introvert. Okay. There you go. Well, there it is. I don't even bother pretending. <laughs> I, I really can't be bothered no exactly i don't i i actually don't care what people think man no no you yeah. know no exactly especially at my age well i have a joke for you if you maybe kind of lighten things up a little bit ready like if nobody if nobody likes you here's here's a little line nobody likes me yesterday even alexa told me to fuck off that's funny. Where's the joke? <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, gee, that's so good. I, thought, I mean, it was lovey-dovey. It's a good line. <sighs> you get it because Alexa's not even a person. You get it? You get it? My son hates it when I say get it. It's pretty stupid to say you get it, man. Get it? You get it? Anyway. If you have to ask that, it's not funny. Oh, no. But I, I thought, it's unfunny. I think, I think it's funny. No. Oh. Not that great, man. What if you asked Alexa something and she did tell you to fuck off? I would laugh. That would be like a ghost in the machine. That or would something. be funny, but it's not. My joke isn't funny, but that would be funny. It's pretty funny, but uh, there you I'm go. Not, that's, I'm, I'm that's, not. I don't think it's that great. That's all I. Ever, that's all I wanted. I didn't that's what even you want to laugh. For, <laughs> he lives for the approval of the crowd. Did I say it wrong? Nobody likes me. Yesterday, even Alexa told me to fuck off. Anyway, no, no still, contrived. It still doesn't land. Doesn't land anywhere around here. Well, I never, uh, never purported to be a, a comedian. Are you going to do a stand-up now? Oh no! Can you imagine trying to do a tight five in a like a comedy open mic? No, thank you. Oh man, that takes balls, dude. Yes, dolls. That's that's uh, kudos to anyone who tries that. Go try it, man. Oh please, dude. Stretch your legs. <laughs> yeah. Forget about, yeah. <laughs> hey man, my voice is all. <clears throat> sorry. No, yeah, I but you made damaged. You made it through the last gig again. barely. But what, I'm looking forward to taking some time off, resting my voice. What's happened? I don't know. I strained it doing some stupid cover tune months ago. I thought you were in your home studio doing something, practicing singing and blew something. No, no. I remember when it happened. Did were you did you hear, feel Tried yourself to hit a high note. straining? No, I hit a high note and something happened. Plus, I've been had a cold now, so yeah, maybe I'll lay off cigars and just lay off the whole damn thing as I know it. Well, that can't be good for your throat. No, probably not. I'm, I'm sure it would be considered. It a, wasn't good for Sigmund Freud's throat. It's not good, really. <laughs> Died of throat cancer. Oh, I did not know that. Oh well, my god! That's now a, there's a brand called Freud. I don't know. You really want to? <laughs> really <laughs> okay oh they didn't right. dig that's, deep that's enough that's to great. figure out is what happened to that's it. a great brand name man oh my god i think you might want to rethink that name well they should have one if it's a freud one they should have one called blow why didn't he do blow i don't know i don't know i could be like seriously off base but i'm gonna look for that well, so what? I mean, it was legal back then. Yeah, so everybody what? Everybody did blow. It's illegal now when everybody does blow. No, nah, not really. I don't. I'm a, I'm straight edge. But I'm sick of talking about drugs, man. Okay, well, let's talk about something else that I got. Got any blow? <laughs> yeah, then you talk about nothing. Right? Well, that's what we're doing now. Yeah, it's a, it's a podcast about nothing. Okay, that's not... You're going to get... Well, no one's listening anyway, so you're going to get... You can't get sued. Get sued. <laughs> Pay up. Pay up, man. Um, hey, I know we've talked about this a couple times before, mm-hmm. but I, this morning I was thinking about our trips to the Vagabond movie house on Wilshire back in the day. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
nobody calls them movie houses for one thing. And our dad was so old and Uncle Roger was so old. They call them movie houses and you and I call them movie houses and I get made fun of for calling them a movie house. Well, that's the same. You can call it refrigerator and icebox too, Dad. I'm looking at you, Brendan. Icebox. Uh, Icebox, that's right. But nobody calls them movie houses anymore. But that, the Vagabond, was really a movie house because they played all those old movies. And I think it's indicative of living in L.A. that you grow up in all these kind of, with these strange movie houses especially dad used to drag us to all those MGM musicals. I loved it. And part of our um, exposure to the old days and the old ways. There was a little place called the Bijou for a minute on Hollywood Boulevard that used to play silent movies. Oh, didn't we go in there once and not too? even more than silent movies. Yeah, a couple times. There was a little screen in there. Yeah. By a little bookshop. I think it was by C.C. C. Browns there. It was by C.C. C. Browns, and it's so funny you brought up C.C. C. Browns because I was going to bring up Swenson's. Okay. That the lemon custard ice cream over there. Ooh, oh. how about that guy that you? That, yeah, his name was I think David Bynum. David Lee Bynum used to do some strange little comedy stuff out front. Yeah, and it, he was a he was kind of a trip. I didn't know what to make of him, but he was always there, like clockwork, doing his shtick, playing sped up songs. Yeah, lip syncing. <laughs> I think he's. I, I'm sure he's out there. People have talked about him, but. Um, I want to see if he is on the interwebs. But um, those MG musicals, I mean, even before we went to MGM musicals, before we even went to The Vagabond, Dad took us to see, like, That's Entertainment and all that with all the old MGM stars. Mm -hmm. But the crazy thing, he took us to The Vagabond to see movies like with Fred and Ginger, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, Eleanor Powell, Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland. But they had trippy names mickey rooney and judy garland we saw like babes in arms and strike up the band and stuff like that yeah but the dancing ones were like all kind of in this big catch-all um oh my god like broadway melody of x year you know what i mean insert the year yeah right you know what i mean uh uh-huh. Broadway Melody 1936, 38, 1940, most likely most of the time with Fred Astaire, sometimes with Ginger Rogers, but Eleanor Powell, Dad's hero, was in some of those. Yeah. And um I think she was she at the Vagabond one night? I don't know, man. Someone was. Dad went up and gushed over him. But um Oh, they had some kind of I met her though. Where'd we meet her? We either met her there at the Vagabond or at the Academy. Probably the Academy, man. Uh, she could have been. Eleanor Powell might have been a special guest at the Vagabond, too. Huh. And then Dad finding, being shown her tap shoe, tap shoes. Oh, yeah. Like Capizio on Vine. But then we got exposed to the wartime stuff, you know, like with Gene Kelly, Anchors Away and On the Town and stuff like that. It was important for Dad to expose us to that stuff. Yeah. And I'm glad we got immersed, exposed to that culture. Sure, me too, man. Come on, boys. Let's go to the Vagabond. Yeah. And, uh, it's fun. Yeah. And we took to it. We enjoyed it. But, I mean, they certainly didn't get rock and roll because they were, I don't know what they got, but they had a, Dad and Uncle Roger had a skewed version of what rock and roll, uh, what rock you and can't, roll was. You can't write about death. Really, Uncle Rog? I can't use the word die? Bull. Why? <laughs> he was kind of superstitious anyway. Uh, uh, probably show business you don't want to die on stage uh, that's exactly what i want to do <laughs> no but I, like, die, I mean like die like comics die i know die a death die a death instead of kill you is can, this anything you shouldn't you shouldn't die on stage but you should kill on stage yeah that's funny dude so funny man no it is <laughs> it is funny <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to be doing this in person because I still haven't worked out the sound of the uh, remote recording. Well, I can't help you. You're going to have to figure it out You're on your own, man. I know. I'm going to do it. I told you what buttons to look for Yeah, in the Zoom app. I'm going to look again. I, there was that little settings stuff, but original sound. Anyway, don't, don't worry. I got it. Okay. Well, if not, you can always hawk your thing, uh, uh, L8. No, I still want to uh, record on it. Okay. Well, I, then record on it. It's so easy just to have a thing in front of me instead of all that DAW stuff. 
Duh. Duh. When I look at it, I, I'm like... Do you, have you tried multi-tracking on the Zoom L8? Not, not yet. It's easy, man. I want to grab It's my, not the easiest machine. No, because that little screen isn't that very friendly. But it's great for, for what I'm doing here, which is almost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's like it's having a, a little Porta studio. I've had 70, we've had recorded 70 shows on here. I haven't really done music on it. I haven't really done much music. Yeah, but they've been playing every night. But that's not standalone. Then you dump that into uh, Logic Pro. Yeah, but I'd rather just go into Logic Pro. Yeah, and there's some, are, there's some kind of presets on here. I'm thinking you can put a whole interview on one just at the touch of a button. Yeah, why? I mean, instead, maybe instead of having to see it all in Logic Pro and edit stuff, you could have music in one button for that episode. You could have whatever you want in the preset button. Don't fall asleep. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, Alexa, I get it. Thank yeah. Yeah. Much. Yeah. Um, uh, dude, I finally, we, you, as you know, we took a trip to the mountains. Of huh? North- Finally took our little vacation up to North Carolina and Tennessee up in the mountains. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The trip to North Carolina was fun. We went to places called like Maggie Valley, went to Cherokee, North Carolina, saw a bunch of elk at the side of the road, which was, there's an elk overpopulation there. Is it a club? Yeah, it's a, don't be a moose, don't be a moose on their turf though, man. Elk's club. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Get it? Is it a club? Get it? Um, and we went to a place called Bryson City. Yeah. That also, there was a railroad called the Great Smoky Mountains Railroad. It's a, they have like 50 some odd miles of track up there, but we took something called the Tuckasegi River, Tuckasegi, Tuckasegi River excursion. But on that excursion, they take you to another town, drop you off. You can walk around for a little while, eat. But I don't. I really think if it wasn't for the railroad stopping there, there wouldn't be much going on on that. And front you have to street. take an Uber back to your other town. I almost was tempted after that to take an Uber back because it's too slow. Yeah, because we saw everything there was needing to see on the way up there. <sighs> but we, I did trip out a lot because there were the old. They filmed the few parts of the Fugitive, that Harrison Ford version. Oh yeah, and there were like wrecked train engines, They're like Illinois Southern or something. From that. Yeah, off to the side, kind of bent over and leaning and fallen over. And there was also the, they, the Department of Corrections bus over there. They didn't back. clean it up? No, they just left it, it there. Is it a tourist thing? It's great. Yeah, people, look, the cameras come out. Up. Unfortunately, mine didn't. But <laughs> uh, it was really, it was kind of surreal to see those that stuff up in the mountains of um, North Carolina. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Isn't Gatlinburg Myrtle Beach in the mountains, like we said? Uh, that's that's freaking funny. That's an, Looks look. just like it. Look. That's crazy. We already said that last time. Yeah, but it is, man. I'll tell you how much. Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge, right? Mm-hmm. Myrtle Beach in the mountains. They call it Myrtle Beach in the sky up there, but the same attractions are up there, mm-hmm. just with different landscape, like Ripley's Aquarium and Hollywood Wax Museum and all that stuff. Oh, Yeah. But to me, whenever I see Hollywood Wax Museum, I have to think that we just lived a block and a half away from there. I know this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's um, I don't know. Like the whole franchise thing has gone crazy. Oh yeah, for sure, man. It's ridiculous corporate bullshit. But that was fun. I mean, going into the original one and all that. Yeah, maybe once or twice. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, we got pitched for a timeshare when we were at Gatlinburg, and this lady goes, "Well, yeah." They, I got transferred from uh, Myrtle Beach to Gatlinburg, and you know, I'm like, oh, duh, you're pit- it feels like I'm in Myrtle Beach right now. Anyway, and you, you listened to her? No, I said she knew I was from Myrtle Beach, right? And she knew we were from Myr- Myrtle Beach, and she kept on. I think part of the end game is to keep people there as long as possible, engaged in conversation. Yeah, of course. What a- <laughs> oh, but anyway, I said, and that when she was done, I said, yep, Myrtle Beach. Oh, God. <laughs> Myrtle Beach, another can of worms. Oh, but it's it's funny that it's the same thing. It's it's, it's the same ridiculous thing, actually. You're just talking about the whole claptrap aspect of it. Yeah, pretty much. That's all I see. That's all I Here, see. Here, David Lee Bynum. I think he was this guy born December fourth, nineteen thirty three. Died June twenty third, nineteen ninety five. 
I'm an sure. actor known for Lethal Weapon. He was a homeless guy. Was that? Right? That, that would make sense to me. I don't know for sure. I'm sure it's that dude. I'm sure it's him. David Lee Bynum. Yeah, I'm sure that's him, man. Maybe. Oh, that's cool. Anyway. But he kind of like, you You wanted to watch what he was doing because he was different. Weird. Yeah, different, man. Scary. Different is nice, but it sure isn't pretty. Pretty is what it's about. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I ha- yeah, seriously. Why? What's with all the show tunes, man? I don't know. Always, always, always. I never met anyone who was different who couldn't figure that out. I know all these things, but... Yeah, I know you do, but you just but, don't bring uh, them to the surface. You you bury them deep. I don't bury anything, man. The trauma of being exposed to show tunes. Why is that a trauma? I know. I'm just making that up. I'm lucky. You are lucky. I'm a you're, man you're, you're, who uh, wants children. I don't know what that is, man, but it's... it's lucky. Tur- <laughs> it's turning slightly gay. Small <laughs> world, isn't it? Anyway. What is that? It's a... I don't know what musical it's Robert from, Preston. I don't know what it is, but you... Uh, you have you're a grandfather now, and uh, how's oh, come on, how are man. your grandkids? Fine, thanks. <laughs> it's tripping me out that my my first they're, grandchild they're just is fine, coming. Man, I'm glad to know it. So you're a man who loves children. Small world, oh. isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. So you're about to be one. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna. I don't. I don't really even can't get my head wrapped around how it's gonna impact or change my life. Uh, but it's coming. It will. Uh, get ready. Get ready. You'll be doing a lot of babysitting. I I'm have o- a feeling. Man. I'm okay. Because yours are, are in town. Yours my, is in town. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> we, 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 I can't wait to go back and see mine, but yeah. No, no. That's It's, it's incredible, <sighs> dude. Um, little human. Little Petri dish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, wait. <clears throat> If you go into middle, if you go into a little preschool, you're bound to catch something. Oh as, yeah, as a grown up. But that's part and parcel of the whole thing, man. Yeah, yeah. This is great, man. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Old man shit. What are you reading? Are you reading anything no, new? Not no, not right now. No. Let's see. I finally finished that Main Street book. I was slogging through. Yeah. Now I'm on the awkward thoughts of W. Kamau Bell. I'm enjoying it, but now I'm, I am I want, before I even read the book, I wanted to watch every single episode of United Shades of America. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, I miss it when the original broadcasts come on CNN on Sundays, and I'm not sure I want to pay a buck ninety nine for each episode no for way. seven seasons. So I'm trying, <laughs> trying to find a way to hack that. Well, I haven't seen much. I saw a great Jerry Lee Lewis documentary. Oh. It was from 1989. It was called I Am What I Am. Yeah. It was like a who's who of music bigwigs. And they all seemed kind of young still, even like... They were kind of young. 1989. It's so funny. I mean, Sam Phillips looked young. Roy Orbison was in like 52 or something. Yeah. Roy Orbison was in it. Johnny Cash was in it. Uh, Chuck Berry. Carl Perkins, I said, right? But what a kind of... tragic stuff happened to him jerry lee lewis yeah two wives died two of his two sons died one drowned one got into a car wreck um that was it was just but i never really understood him he always seemed older to me than he really was yeah you know and um i met him down here you did he was playing he had a gig here but he he popped into one of these clubs at celebrity square what? And Phil the, is a piano tuner and all that, so we all went over there. No. Yeah. What was he like? He looked like a zombie. I know. He always looks, that's what I mean. He always looked kind of sickly somehow. Yeah. But I did. was he nice to you? Uh, not re- kind of aloof. That's how he always was, man. Yeah. And then, of course, his cousin Jimmy Swaggart was on there talking about it, talking about his soul. Of course. He was worried about his soul. Yeah. And all that. Sure. Um, Swaggart can play a mean piano, too. Oh, yeah. But the tragedies in his life and then getting blackballed for marrying his cousin. It was his, like once removed first cousin or something. I don't even know. What does it, that mean? I was trying to figure that out last night. It's not the same as saying this is my first cousin. This is my second cousin. You can have a first cousin removed by a generation. 
I don't know, man. I, still, hey. It was <laughs> difficult for me to even, I, I just got it in my head to look and see what that was all about. It's still. And I cannot understand it. Go out of the gene pool, man. <laughs> go, go find someone else, dude. If it's good enough for the royal family. Oh, have you taken a look at them? Oh, my God. I There's get something it. wrong. Yes, there is, but that's all, you know. Victoria it was related to everybody. Queen Victoria. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. All the mm. uh, the monarchs from all the other countries all related. Keep it in the family, Vicky. Vicky. <laughs> Queen Vicky. Hi, I'm Queen Vicky. Yeah. Oh, Re- Victor. Oh, Victor Victoria. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, I, I came away feeling kind of sorry for uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. I'm sure. I mean, the... the well, the, you know, it's a, it's a price you pay playing the devil's music. Yeah, that of course, that came up, of too. Of course, it's a curse. Yeah, but it seemed that he had so like a really bad string of events happen. I know, to him I'm just kidding. But he could play. It always tripped me out that he had a microphone st- a straight microphone stand almost in the middle of the piano in front of the keyboard. Huh. Think about that. There's a pole right there, so I, you see him changing, having to go around no. it. And uh, surely, I mean, I know they had boom mics back then. Of course, man. <laughs> I, I, I never understood about it. It seemed to work for him. He only had two piano lessons, apparently. Yeah. And he just played like that. Well, that's all he needs. Yeah, but he played like that before he had the piano yeah, lessons. Yeah, he didn't need any. That's crazy. I should be so lucky. One trick pony. Oh, but those tricks, though, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Exactly, man. Exactly. Boogie boogie. He made a deal. <laughs> he made a deal, man. He did it. He made a deal? Yeah. I don't think with so. With a record label. Huh? Yeah, exactly. What do you think I was talking about? A lot of about? stuff about Sun Records. That was fascinating Sh- shit. Yeah. I could say shit. Oh, you can't. Because I said fuck earlier. Uh. So, um, But anyway, mm. I never really knew well, much what, about what would be the, What would be the... Uh, tri- uh, what would be the... <laughs> yeah? What would be the uh, trinity of cuss words? You get- oh, yes. Uh you, there's got to be one more left. Yeah, I'm not going to say that one. <laughs> the things Pascal used to say. I don't know which one. I don't know. <laughs> Somehow I don't remember right now. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, that that was fun to, to see the Jerry Lee Lewis thing. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, what are you going to do? The trip to the mountains was fun, but in retrospect, we should have picked one spot instead of keeping driving as many places we could see. Yeah, just maybe because it didn't. I didn't come back feeling relaxed no no that's no good i i didn't we stayed too long in austin and you you felt like har- harried i felt like eh, we ran out of stuff to do i, I don't know oh yeah <laughs> i mean we didn't really run out of stuff to do but where what you got to like hold on to your wallet because when you go to places like gatlinburg or all that it's the same as being here everyone everything costs of to, course to go to the top in a gondola cost we passed on that it was like 37 bucks a piece to go on this little ride up to the top i like to not spend money man no so we drove through like the great smoky mountains and went to overlooks and had a a nice time anyway every time i come in here i see some new shit that you got no not really nothing's new since you got here i see an alvarez soft-sided guitar case over there i never saw before that was there it was Oh. I just needed a, a little soft case for the baritone guitar so it can't doesn't have to be naked all the time. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I found it. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I got some guitars here. Oh, by the way, I was also watching part of a Bob Dylan documentary. I forgot what it's Which called. Which one? I forgot. It's got Pete Seeger with the long neck banjo that he invented. No Direction Home? I Maybe. I don't know. I don't know, but... um. All the old coffee house days, people yelling traitor when he, when he Dave, went to... Dave Von Ronk or something. Yeah, something like that. Standing in a bar with an Irish cap on. Yes, 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 that's yeah, the that one. Guy. Talking about... Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. And uh, they talked about... he uh, Dylan said something about Freddie Neal. That must be Fred Neal, like the whole coffee house bunch that we have reacquainted with in Miami. We. And Oscar Brand. Not us. Came, no. <laughs> what do you mean not us we were too, we were babies we're not no, i know but by talking to fred from the coffee house on the coffee house stuff from the day oh yeah 
And you, uh, someone brought up Oscar Brand, who also happened to be in Once Upon a Coffee House, which was it's just like a degree removed. Russell from, Brand from, from no, did I say Russell? Brand? No, Oscar. Once removed, like a cousin. Yeah, like the degrees of separation from Dylan. Of course, man. I don't know what I'm looking at. Oh here. man, I don't know. So anyway, Thanksgiving Day's coming. Yeah. <laughs> People already have their Christmas shit out. I don't know. The tree lighting was at Broadway yesterday. It's a little bit uh, obscene, isn't it? It's 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 killed it for retail has killed it for me, man. A, re- a long time ago, retail killed the Christmas star. It's not you know it's a, a bit of my soul has been chipped away as well, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably a lot of it. Oh, that's really. I think my soul's still intact. My soul's kind of I guard bro- it. Shit, broken. Really, it is. Uh, ah, man. Not mine. It says, good a broken m- soul. My soul goes, good morning, Roger. We're going to try to have a good day again today. Sure. <laughs> gonna, the operative word is try. We're going to have a great day today. Oh, uh, mine says, go back to sleep. Oh, my soul. Go back to sleep, man. <laughs> Ain't nothing going on today. Just be a, uh, just be a somnambulist. A little sleep. Throughout the day. A little a folding of the hands. Love not sleep. Oh boy. Oh. What if you're a night owl? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding hands to rest. Yes, yes, yes. And your and your failure will be epic. Or it says something. Let the to... devil take the rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just made that part up. That was pretty clever, man. I thought you made up the first part too. Oh no, that's in the Bible. Oh yes, it is. As a matter of fact. <laughs> Okay. Dumbass. All right, dude. You already know that. Well, That's where you started it. Of course I knew that. It fell right in. Hey. I fell right in too, man. Well, I am happy to be here. I think it's... Um, Good to have you. It's mm. better than doing remote. I like Are it. Are you sure? Yeah, because I get to see what kind of condition your condition's in when I come I over I don't here. like it when you uh, you have to always have to find out how I am, man. Before, remember I... T- <laughs> I'll tell you how I am. A lousy. I said, are you going to be nice to me before you came over here? Are you going to be all lovey-dovey with this me? Is what, no, I don't like that. I know you don't. Uh, this is it. Are you in a decent state of mind for this? Yeah, yeah. Well, I said, what does that even mean? I don't appreciate this line of reasoning. Yes, 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 exactly. I just hope you will be so nice. I mean lovey-dovey. <laughs> yes, yes. I said, I'm sorry, man. Too many demands. I can't promise you anything. Uh, and then you said a slap and tickle, and I didn't even bother I responding. Well, that don't confront me. As long as I my rent you. My, my rent money to next Friday. Confront. Yeah, that's. I think that's what that's what the the words were. And that uh, I thought it was concern. Uh, he's. I, I think it's confront. Or did he say concern? Weird. Uh, maybe, but I think I think it deserves a little look. It sa- it seems like it would be concerned, but I think it's confront. Shh. But anyway, that's, that's all I have this lovely afternoon. Okay, then. Uh, Yale Brothers, episode 71. That don't confront me. Don't confront me, man. You, you, you don't, don't try to punch me. You'll draw back a nub. And as soon as I said I had a job, she, said, <laughs> she was so nice. Yeah. I mean, she was lovey-dovey. Oh, yeah. Slap and tickle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely, no. man. All right, man. I hope your voice feels better. It or doesn't ha- hurt. I don't think a voice feels a, a certain way. I hope your throat feels better. My throat doesn't hurt. I just, all my high notes are gone. Maybe your balls are finally dropping. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, you can find us at Brothers at gmail.com. Or Facebook still. And, uh, yeah, God bless everybody. Yes. Rock and roll.